Hi, guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the business of love. The business of love. I had another title, but that other title is, is uh, too fresh. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, let's pray. Father... I thank you for this time just coming together through our screens, through our tablets, through whatever we have, Um, Lord God, to speak to us today in such a special way that it rocks our world and changes something in us, because that's that's what a sermon is supposed to do. It's supposed to plant seeds so we can go and be changed. The preacher, as well as the pre- as well as the preach too, we all need to be changed by your word. And Father, I just pray that you permeate the atmosphere in a way that you haven't done before. Shift the the plates of our lives and shift things in our life. Take away everything that is not of you. Hide me behind the cross. Let Rachel die so you can live in our, in our lives. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, hope you're doing well today. Um, If you are not doing well today, I'll be praying for you. Um, And even if you are doing well, I'll be praying for you. Um... But I've got to tell you about the other title of this sermon. As I said, the sermon is going to be called The Business of Love. (laughs) But I did have another title. And it was... It was The Business of Minding Your Own Business. (laughs) Because this... Every debate, I was, I was thinking to myself that every debate that we have in the church, most of them is simply because humans, Christians included, have a hard time minding their own business. The whole uh, same-sex debate, the whole... Uh, women in the church debate, the whole, every debate that you can think of stems itself in, in people not minding their own business or people thinking that they have to have an opinion about everything. We live in a world that we just, feel that we have to have a, have an opinion or or have a ha, have an opinion on everything and we don't we so don't but we feel we do and then if we don't have an opinion people consider us weak that we're not following the word of God and we need to come um, on this side or this side. But we, what, I've, what I'm learning with the Lord, at least with me, is it's okay to, to um, might I say, disagree with God. Or not be there, not be on a certain issue with God to say, I've 
I've had this about I've had this about some things that I've said I've said, Lord, I don't agree with that. And he either does one thing, he either he either does two things. He he says, Okay, let me show you to change your mind or he says, okay, you don't have to agree with that, but that's that's what my word is. And yeah, so I think we are just, we are just, ex- especially in the church world, because that's what I know. I think we are just, just, okay queens and kings of not minding our own business. And the business that we should be minding, we're not minding. When I say mind our own business, um, I think we mind uh, God's business too much and we don't we often don't see well to the ways of our own house. Um, Because, dare I say, who a person sleeps with or whether they sleep with the same sex, opposite sex, whether they're in a relationship with the same sex, opposite sex, both sexes, all that stuff, that is a God thing for him to deal with. And the, and if he assigned people to their, to their lives, and I've heard many stories. I've heard stories of, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I'm gay, and God loves me, and I'm still gay. I've heard stories of, I'm, you know, I was gay and God changed me, or I'm a Christian, I'm gay, but I'm celibate, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just like, okay, that's not my concern. My concern is to love you, and I think that we think loving is weak, but loving is very strong, and I'll get back to that later. And, you know, when, like, even um, with the issue of abortion, like, if somebody um, has, has had an abortion or it's, pregnant out of wedlock, it is not our business or our concern to, um, to, uh, to put them on the right path or whatever. That's God's business. And one thing I know about God is he knows how to take care of his business very well. He doesn't need he doesn't need me nosing in with my opinion and my opinion could be wrong and he knows what he's doing with this person. My business is to love that person, is to support that person and offer assistance that I can. That's my business. That's the business of love. I often say that the business of love doesn't mean agreement um, or even acceptance. The business of, of love means I embrace you when I embrace you, I understand that you're human, I understand that you're fallible, I understand that you're God's creation. 
without me having to to fully agree with you. Um, I think what people want is to be to be um, seen, known, and loved. I've always said that that the four things people want is to be um, do you see me? Do you accept me? Uh, do you know me? And do you love me? And I think we've just gotten away from that. We've we've gotten stuck on the issues and uh, should women pre- should women preach in the church? Should they not? Should uh, gay marriage be um, in the church? Should it not? Um, we get stuck on all these issues uh, that are really none of our business. Because if if a woman uh, if if she feels called by God to preach and she she has the unction uh, to preach, um, who are you? to have an opinion to, to say that she shouldn't. If she shouldn't, if that's not something that God wants her to do, he will let her know in time. You don't need to have an opinion about everything. And the other day, <laughs> I'll tell you about two stories. The other day, I was talking to someone and I kind of got caught up in, uh, I said, oh, uh, I've heard some stories about that person. And the other person says, well, I, I don't like, uh, I don't like stories like about whatever people. And I, and I stopped and I thought about that. Now, I'm not a person that likes to gossip, but like people, like people do, um, even if you're not a person who likes to, who gossips or whatever you keep to yourself, sometimes you, sometimes I have the temptation to fall into a little, um, to fall into gossip without even knowing that and I and I said to myself Rachel what is this your business why are why do you need to know this information why is some some part of you in glee because you're talking about what this person did or oh did you see he, she, she says what he said? Why are you so in to the fact that whatever? It's not your business. Stay out of it. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm checked. And I think that if, like, I think we have too many opinions on things we don't need to have opinions about, and. I think that um, I I think God is a big God, and he, he'll be he, he'll be dealing with stuff as he deals with them, and I don't think he's assigned us to have all these different opinions and people's lives and how they live them and how they raise their children or how they dress and this and that. I think we just have too many opinions on things that we shouldn't have opinions about. I think I think some of us are I think gossip creates glee in some of us and it's it's dangerous because often when you're you're talking about so, someone else, you're not paying attention to what's going on in your house. And the Lord said about um, the Proverbs 31 woman, but I'm using it 
um, in in men he, with men here. Um, he says she looks well to the ways of her house. Um, her husband and children call her blessed. And I think a lot of times things start because we're not looking well to the ways of our own house. We're too busy uh, talking about, oh, what's that mom doing over there? What's that neighbor doing over there? Oh, what what is this celebrity doing? What is that celebrity doing? Oh, somebody got arrested. I've, I'm not saying this because I don't know. I'm saying this because I've gotten caught up in it a few times, too, where where it's just easy to, to talk about situations that we don't know and to, to like, just be in, in gossip, Bill, instead of looking well to the ways of our own house and our own families. And the only thing that is our business, really, is to love God and love people. That's the only thing he commands us to do. And I believe that in every person's life, he sets certain people, certain trustworthy people around the person and those trustworthy people uh, that know that person really well and who he's assigned to that person will be the guides, will be uh, correction, will be, um, will be the, will be, have, have wisdom about certain things. And if you're not, the, that person in their lives, what are you doing? Like, it's none of your business. Stay out of it. If she wants to preach, let her preach. If, you know, if um, she gets pregnant in wedlock and, and keeps the baby, it's not your concern. And, like, I think we just need to look well to the ways of our own house and our own soul and our own sins and our our own kind of things. Because I think it is often easier to look at somebody to say, oh, why are they doing that? Why are they doing this? Why, why is... Why is it happening? They should be doing that. They should be doing this. Um, that it is to look inward, because looking inward will 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 shine the light on you and the problems you have going on inside you. A lot of people mind mind each other's business. Because it is easier to mind your business than it is my business. So, so for an example, it is easier to uh, tell you what to do in your marriage. And I'm a single person. I've never been married in my life. But I'm telling you what to do with your marriage. But yet... I, I'm, I'm having sex with my boyfriend, and I'm a, I'm a professing believer. See, it is, because it, it is easier to put on guilt for the situation you don't know than for the situation you do know, or it is easier to comment on how badly you're dressing your children rather than to comment to look in inside internally and see that my 
my children are are on drugs or or something terrible like that. We need to be in the business of lo- loving God and loving people. And I think it's so it's so interesting. We think hate and judgment will get people to change, but no, it is love, it is acceptance, it is it is understanding that will that will flip the glitch in somebody's head. We we've got it totally wrong and I think we need to get it right. Um I think we look we look um to the ways of other people's houses too much and not enough on our own houses because if we looked at ourselves we may actually believe, we may actually find out that we're not as perfect as we think we are and we need to do inner work on our inner selves and our inner lives because usually um, judgment starts in your inner life. When I say inner life, I mean the life that you have inside of you. The life that you have in your own mind, mind in your own spirit in your own head. It is much harder to look at that and assess that and heal that rather than uh, to assess and heal other people's lives. I think it's so much easier. And quite often what we see, what we know is, is not the whole story. See, it's, and it's easier to comment on people we don't know than people we know. Like, we may see a headline and really just make judgments on things we don't know because of what we read in some paper and because of what we read in the news. When most of what we what we read are half truths at best and we don't know what drove that person to do what they did and although we all need to make judgments every day but we don't need to be judgmental Like, we can make judgments on a situation without judging the, the, the people. So we can make a judgment like, oh, that's so sad. I feel so bad for her that she, um, is in that situation without saying, oh, she's, she's a dirty so-and-so. And being harsh and judgmental. We're only judgmental because we've never been in that situation and we're we're just going off of what we think we would do. Honestly, we don't know what we would do in that situation. So it is easier to approach someone with love and then with judgment, or we don't need to approach them at all. We just need to love them and let God handle his business. And we need to stop looking at love as this weak, okay, I'll just love you. Love is the strongest emotion. Love changes people. Love shifts things. Love, love does um, things that hate or judgment cannot do. And that's why the Lord says to love him and to love people. And loving people, like I said before, is not 
agreeing with everything that they do. It's embracing them even whether you disagree or not. That's real love. To say, I embrace you as a person. I, even though I don't understand you, even though I disagree with you, I embrace you as a person. And I think when we do that, we'll show the love of Jesus. Um, when, when Jesus corrected people, he did co- check people in the Bible. But when he did it, he did it in the most loving way. He started conversations with people. When I think about the woman of the well, he started conversations with her. And then he gently, he gently talked to her about her situation. He approached it gently. He didn't say, well, I know you have five husbands and you're going to hell if you don't repent. No, in the course of conversation, he just gently spoke to her about it. And the only and the and the woman caught in adultery, same thing. He gently said he said women woman go and sin no more after after he rode in the sand and said, those without sin cast the first stone. And uh, it's just, we op- um, he operated so differently than we do. I don't know where this spirit of, of uh, judgmentalness and harshness came from it. Diff- definitely didn't come from Jesus. That's for sure. And um, in the Old Testament, yes, definitely, God was God was harsh at times, but He knew what He was doing. See the dif- the difference between God and us is He knows the heart inside and out. He knew what he was doing when he would wipe out people and whatever with people. He knew their hearts. He knew what they would be. He knew what he would need. So that's how he could do that. We don't have that kind of uh, vision. He hasn't given us that kind of vision to... uh, to know people's hearts, to know what their intentions are. He knew what their intentions are. So it seems sad to us when it said, uh, God told this person to kill all those people. But he knew what he was doing. Because he's God and he has every right to do that. Um, But for us, we don't. I was talking to a few weeks, about six months ago now, I bumped into a transgender person, and I said, and we were talking about, uh, we were talking about life and whatever, uh, this was on the wheels trans, and wheels trans, for those of you uh, who don't live in Ontario, is a wheelchair bus service who that uh, uh, takes you to certain places. So I was going to a doctor's appointment and I bumped into this transgender person. And I said to him, I said, I said, I have never made anybody be attracted to anyone in my life. So because I haven't made that, 
I can't tell you that, um, you know, you're wrong, because I've never been in your shoes. And I said, oh, it, that must have been hard for you. So I let, I tried my best to lead with compassion. And I hope, um, as, as a believer, he felt, um, that person felt loved in that moment. That's what my aim and desire was. Um, because I said, I will never be able to know how you feel. And I said, I'm not God. He, he says what he says, but my job is to love you. And I would hope that that person felt loved by me in that moment. And I think that, that we as Christians think uh, we need to have an opinion, we need to come on the side of everything, but we don't. We don't. We, there are times where we can say, okay, I don't know. I, I don't know what side to come down on. I, I can see this side and that side, and that's okay. And it's all right to what some people would say, live in the tension. It's all right to not have all the answers and to hold tension. God is not going to judge you for not knowing the answer on a specific situation or to hold tension on a specific situation. Life is hard and we're not called to have all the answers. All we're called to do is love God and love people. And love is very is a strong emotion. It can turn it can turn the the most egregious sinner into someone who loves Jesus into someone who serves Jesus, you, you you wouldn't know what your love can do. And we should be up to the business of love. I think that's the only business that we need to be up to. And even when it comes to our children, I think sometimes we we can teach the teach them and not make it look like punishment cuz I think I think children are now disclaimer I don't have children so but I think uh being a child as I was I reacted better to teach, to teaching from my parents rather than I did harsh punishment. And sometimes um, natural consequences are the best teachers. Um, so teach them um, instead of punishing them. That's what would have worked for me better as a child. I'm speaking when I was a child because I, 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 when I was a child, reacted better to teaching rather than punishing because when you teach somebody, then they learn. When you punish somebody, they just feel bad about themselves and just feel punished. And I was also thinking the other day there was there was this whole <clears throat> there was this whole 
inter internet thing with children? Should you give your children phones? Should you do this and should you do that? And I'm not going to say yes or no to that, depending on the child and you know your children. I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to say anything like that. But I was thinking about this. I thought, instead of running away from the trials of the internet and being online, wouldn't it be better, this is just in my mind and I'm not a parent, wouldn't it be better, to, though, to teach them to sit with them on Facebook, to sit with them on Instagram and say, hey, here's Facebook, here's Instagram, and really have a discussion with them about it in, instead of saying, no, you're not getting the phone, you're not getting the internet. It, wouldn't it be fun, uh, not fun, wouldn't it be better to teach them and say, um, to have a discussion with them to say, what do you think about this? What, here's what mommy and daddy are afraid of. And, um, you know, because people are not always kind or whatever, just to walk them through and not only teach them about the website, but teach them about your fears. Say, Dad, Dad won't want you to have a phone because um, people can be mean, and I'm not sure you can handle it. Or just to be honest with them and say, come from a place of honesty and love it and loving them and just telling them not everyone can be nice. And then if you're afraid of, of, depending on the age of the child, if you're afraid of uh, them bumping into porn, well, then, depending on the age of the child, teach them about porn. Teach them, teach them or have a discussion with them do you know what this is? Do you know why mommy doesn't want you to see that? And then you can go into a whole thing of value and self-worth for girls and boys. I'm just saying it's better to teach people, including children, rather than to judge them or to say, no, I know there are probably some circumstances where you just say no, but there are more circumstances where if you teach them why or have frank discussions about why you're afraid, they'll, they'll understand. Because remember, children are just little people too. And sometimes, I know with me, when I was a child, I was very uh, sensitive. And when I knew my mom was afraid, it made me feel better about being afraid. If she said, I'm scared or whatever, I was like, okay, mom is scared too. And we can both deal with this together. You know, I think what parents need to know from someone who doesn't have children, but was a child, um, parents need to know that it's okay to be human in front of your children. It's okay to admit you're scared. It's okay to admit you don't know. It's okay um, to, to admit you're just human. And the child will respect that. It's okay to share your fears if you don't like so-and-so instead of saying you can't see that person again to your teenagers. You can share your fears. You can say, well, I just sense that he's not a good person and I, I want you to be okay and safe.
children are not looking for perfect parents. Children are looking for parents who love them, who see them, who understand them, and accept them. That's what children are looking for. And I'm saying that as a child who was just looking for that herself when she was a little child and when she was um, a teenager. I wasn't looking for my parents to be perfect. I was just looking for acceptance, love, and the fact that that they knew who I am and I could just be, I could just be home, I could be myself, I could bring all my weirdness home and all that stuff. That's what I was looking for. Anyway, I don't know how this turned into a, a parenting thing, but that is my two cents about it. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Bye.